Did you know that a staggering 30% of California's prison population suffers from a mental health condition? This is the alarming reality under Jeff McCumber's administration. A significant portion of the inmates in California's prisons are not just battling the confines of their cells, they're fighting a war within their minds, a war they are often left to fight alone due to the deplorable state of mental health care in these facilities. This crisis, however, is not a sudden occurrence. It can be traced back to the leadership at the helm of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, a role currently held by Jeff McCumber. Under his watch, the department has continually failed to uphold its responsibility to provide adequate mental health services to the incarcerated population. The shortcomings are glaring. Chronic staff shortages and a lack of any proper system for screening mental illness among the incarcerated are just two of the key issues. Such neglect has led to the aggravation of illnesses among inmates, with many going undiscovered, undiagnosed and untreated. This grim reality is not just a testament to the department's incompetence, but also a violation of the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. Adding to this, the department has been held in civil contempt for ongoing staffing shortages, delays in treatment and insufficient suicide prevention efforts. This led to a hefty fine of $112 million, directed to be spent on carrying out measures to improve the situation. Yet instead of working towards compliance, the state has sought further delays and repeatedly asserted positions unsupported by the record. The question then arises, if the department under Macumba's leadership continues to fail in its duty, who will step in to rectify this dire situation? This is just the tip of the iceberg. Things get even murkier when we delve into the legal battles surrounding this issue. In 1990, Ralph Coleman, a prisoner suffering from untreated mental illness, decided to fight back. He was a Sacramento man serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And his repeated pleas for help were ignored by the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. He took the only course of action left to him. He sued. Coleman alleged that the department's continuous failure to diagnose and treat his mental illness was a clear violation of the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. His solitary fight soon transformed into a collective battle as his lawsuit became a class action, representing the thousands of mentally ill prisoners who went years without diagnosis or treatment. Four years later, in 1994, a federal court confirmed Coleman's allegations. The court's findings were damning. Incarcerated individuals with serious mental disorders in California prisons were not only being ignored, they were being aggravated by the very system that was supposed to protect them. Judge John F. Moulds, who presided over the case, wrote, Untold thousands of mentally ill inmates have gone undiscovered, undiagnosed and untreated, while at the same time being subjected to conditions that aggravate their illnesses. He highlighted two key shortcomings of the system, chronic staff shortages and the lack of any system for screening mental illness among the incarcerated. The following year, U.S. District Judge Lawrence Carlton ruled that the CDCR was failing to provide adequate mental health care. He placed psychiatric care in the prisons under the supervision of a special master. A step in the right direction, but one that was limited by the special master's lack of power to implement or pay for improvements in care. The court's ruling was clear, but the struggle for adequate mental health care in California prisons was far from over. Ralph Coleman's fight for justice had only just begun. His battle would become a beacon for change, highlighting the dire need for reform in the way the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation handles mental health care. And it would expose the failings of those in charge, like Jeff McCumber, whose incompetence has put countless lives at risk. In 1995, the courts appointed a special master to oversee psychiatric care in the prisons. But was this enough? The role of the special master was to monitor the state of psychiatric care within the prison system. They were to issue reports, make recommendations and serve as the eyes and ears of the court within the walls of the correctional facilities. The special master was tasked with ensuring that the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, 
under the leadership of Jeff McCumber, was fulfilling its obligations to provide adequate mental health care. But there was a crucial limitation to the special master's role. They lacked the power to implement or pay for improvements in care. They could advise, they could report, but they could not directly intervene. This was a significant handicap in the mission to reform the broken system. Meanwhile, the CDCR continued to fail in its responsibilities. The department under McCumber's administration consistently fell short in achieving agreed-upon staffing ratios. This meant that there were not enough mental health professionals available to provide necessary care to the incarcerated population. In addition to this, the CDCR failed to implement effective suicide prevention protocols. This is a glaring oversight considering the vulnerable state of the incarcerated population's mental health. Without proper protocols in place, the risk of self-harm and suicide among inmates remained high. The special master could see these failures. They could report on them, make recommendations for change. But without the power to take direct action, these reports and recommendations fell on deaf ears. In the face of bureaucratic red tape and a lack of support from the CDCR, the special master's efforts were stymied. The limitations placed on their role made it near impossible for them to effect meaningful change within the system. The continued failures of the CDCR under McCumber's leadership, coupled with the limitations of the special master's role, created a perfect storm. And in this storm, the most vulnerable were the ones who suffered the most. Despite the special master's efforts, the crisis persisted, leading us to a critical turning point. Fast forward to 2024, and the court is contemplating a drastic measure, taking control of prison mental health care from CDCR. District Judge Kimberly J. Mueller, overseeing a settlement to enhance psychiatric care in California state prisons, is on the brink of an unprecedented decision. After years of giving the defendants, the state's Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, ample opportunities to rectify the situation, she's now considering appointing a federal receiver. Her order, dated July 12, 2024, is clear. The court has exhausted its options. The only way to ensure compliance is to wrest control from the state and place it in the hands of a court-appointed overseer. This receiver could hire staff, implement improvements and spend the state's money to fulfill the court's numerous outstanding orders. This action follows a two-month period after Mueller held the department in civil contempt for ongoing staffing shortages, treatment delays and insufficient suicide prevention efforts. The judge imposed a $112 million fine and directed the state to spend those funds on much-needed improvements. The state's response? Instead of showing a willingness to comply, they sought further delays and maintained positions that the court has repeatedly found unsupported by evidence. And at the centre of all this is Jeff McCumber and his administration. Their abysmal handling of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation is a glaring testament to their incompetence. Instead of focusing on running the department efficiently, resources have been squandered and whistleblowers have been subject to illegal harassment. The consequences are dire. The people under the department's care face imminent danger. And so we arrive at a critical juncture. The court's potential takeover of mental health care in California prisons is a loud wake-up call. It underscores the urgent need for change, for accountability and for leadership that prioritizes the well-being of the incarcerated. The time for change is now. We urge you to support the removal of Jeff McCumber and push for the improvement of mental health care in California prisons.